Hi, this is Sally Morgan, physical therapist, craniosacral therapist, and Tellington T-Touch practitioner for animals and people. This is Tristan, he's a corgi, and this is an episode of Conversations with a Corgi. And today we're gonna kind of wrap up our series about um, things related to having a first aid kit. Well, actually we're not wrapping it up because there's some more things I have to talk about later next week related to dog first aid. And today I thought it would be a good idea to just to go over the vital signs for animals. And you might want to grab a pen and paper and write this down for the kind of animal that you have. Um, because you don't want to have to look this up when you need it. And you want to practice finding these vital signs. Because if you are hiking in the woods somewhere, you're going to need to know this stuff. So that you can help your dog before you can get him down the mountain and back into town to a vet. So it really does help, um, behoove you to have this stuff um, in your um, bag of knowledge at your toolkit right away. Uh, and it might not even be your dog, it might be somebody else's dog or even a stray dog that you're gonna help. So we're gonna talk today about the vital signs for animals and we're gonna start with rabbits because not many people are very familiar with bunnies, but if you have bunnies, it's sometimes hard to find information about bunnies. So for each species of animal, I'm gonna give you their normal temperature, their normal heart rate, and their normal breathing and then we'll talk about how to find those. So the temperature for a rabbit is 103.3 to 104. 103.3 to 104, that's a lot warmer than us. And if you've ever felt a bunny, you can verify that. As a result, they get overheated really easily. Those frozen water bottles um, to have in your rabbit's area so that he can lay against them in the summer are really important for that rabbit to help regulate his temperature. And Furthermore, don't use an ear thermometer on a rabbit. It's gonna be really inaccurate as much as you think, oh, rabbits, they have big ears. Let's use the ear thermometer. Really not accurate. So you wanna use a rectal thermometer and you might even have to get like an infant sized one for such a little animal as a rabbit. So their temperature is 103.3 to 104. If it's higher than that or lower than that, you got a bun in trouble. You're gonna have to heat them up if it's lower than that and cool them down if it's hotter than that. And really that's gonna be your more common problem because rabbits are prone to being overheated um, from stress and from temperature. The heart rate for a bunny, get this, 130 beats per minute up to 325. Sounds like a hummingbird, right? So if your rabbit is super stressed and super scared, you're gonna have 325 beats per minute. I mean, you can almost not even count them there that fast. So obviously you want your rabbit's heart rate resting to be closer to 130, 150, not 325. Um, and I'll show you how to find that in a minute. And then your rabbit's normal breathing, respiration rate is 32 to 60 breaths per minute. So for people, um, we're around 30, so rabbits aren't that different from us when they're relaxed. And that gets us back to that idea of heart coherence when your body rhythms and your animals are in synchrony. So let's look at next the kitty. Kitty cats have the same body temperature resting as a dog, which is 105 105, 100.5 <laughs> to 102.5, 100. 0.5 to 102.5 for cats and dogs. That's their normal temperature, a couple degrees warmer than us. Don't panic that your dog or your cat has a fever unless their temperature is over 102.5. And of course, this is gonna vary a little bit by breed. Um, you know, a Chihuahua may have a higher temperature than a dog that's coming from a Northern environment. A hairier dog may be warmer than a dog with less hair and vice versa. So it really does have some variation. Um, the heart rate for a cat is 160 to 240 beats per minute, quite a bit faster than a bunny, their normal heart rate. You know, rabbits can go from totally chill to totally stressed instantly. Cats are a little bit more up all the time, so their heart rate's a little bit faster, and they're a bigger animal than a rabbit generally, so that's a pretty interesting difference. 160 to 240 beats per minute for your kitties. And then kitty's respiration is 20 to 30. So that means in an, a minute, they have 20 to 30 breaths that they're taking. And remember rabbits were 30 to 60. So rabbits' hearts are beating slower 
or uh, faster and they're taking um, more breaths. So let's now look at dogs. Like kitties, their resting temperature is 105.5 to 102.5. Their heart rate is 60 to 140, closer to a human's than most animals, by the way. Um, remember the cats were 160 to 240. Now I've got a really small dog here, so his heart rate's gonna be a lot more than some big dog like a Newfie. So dog's heart rate, 60 to 140 beats per minute and their respiration is 12 to 24. So if a dog's respiration is more than that and they're panting and they look stressed or hot, your dog is getting close to uh, needing some physical assistance. So respiration for dogs, 12 to 24. That's the amount of breaths they're taking in a minute. Now it's gonna be on the higher end of that if they're a little fella and on the lower end of that if they're a big fella. So think about that. So how do you find the heart rate in your dog if you're not using your plastic cheapy stethoscope that you got, um, the disposable ones? Uh, you're gonna put your hand on your dog's chest and feel the heart rate. It's pretty easy to feel, although he's kind of panting right now, so I'm feeling the respiration too. So you're gonna find that heart rate, get a clock, and you're gonna count for 15 seconds and then multiply that by four. Biscuit, stop panting. It's hard to count when you're, okay, we'll try it. All right, so his heart rate is pretty low. It's about uh, 50. So, or no, 60, I think it multiplied by four. So yeah, so he's right in the normal range for heart rate. Um, you might wanna get good at doing this if you've got a dog with any kind of a heart problem. Now, it's easier to find the respiration. You just look at the chest and count when it's expanding and contracting. You can also try to do it by feeling their breath, but that's not very accurate. So you're just gonna, now with this, you're gonna only do it for 10 seconds. I can't do it while I'm sitting here holding him. I can't really see it. But you know, if your dog is just laying on the floor looking at you, it's pretty easy to uh, count their chest rising and falling or their rib cage. And you do that for 10 seconds and multiply it by six. You can also do it for 15 seconds if you can't remember. Um, but you remember your normal range for a heart rate for a dog is 60 to 140. Temperature, as we talked about previously, you need a rectal thermometer. As terrible as that may seem, um, depending on the size of your animal, make sure you've got some kind of lubricant and use a rectal thermometer because that is the only way to get an accurate temperature. And remember, all these guys have a much hotter temperature than us. Dogs and kitties, 100.5 to 102.5. And bunnies, 103.3 .3 to 104, which means those little bunnies out in my yard when it's being 95 degrees during the day um, and the humidity about 80%, <laughs> those are hot bunnies. Um, luckily, there's a lot of shade here and the ground is super moist, so the buns are able to cool down. But I have noticed some abnormal bun behavior um, during the different times of the day as they're trying to seek a cool place. Um, I'll see them scoot out from a place that's now getting too sunny and try to make their way to an area that's cooler and more shaded. So that's a look at some vital signs for your animals. You should make a little list like this or put it on an index card and keep it in your animal first aid kit. I have it posted in my office where I see animals because uh, believe it or not, I've had animals in medical emergencies when I'm seeing them more than once, sadly. Um, and I keep one, uh, sometimes I tape it to the lid of the box so that I don't lose it um, in the medical equipment box that I have. Um, and you might want to put it in different places like your car. And you might even want to put it on a tiny piece of paper with a few things like gauze and uh, vet wrap that you might have with you when you're hiking with your dog or going to the beach, just so that you have an idea of what's normal. Animals get heat stroke, heat exhaustion, 
they get shocky, they can get exhausted from running. Um, a dog like Tristan will go, 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 way past um, what his really physical tolerance can be. Um, there are other dogs like my friend's pug that you kind of have to wait for him to decide he wants to come along. Not much chance of him overdoing it. <laughs> so anyway, hope that's helpful to you. And this week, my job as an educator is on Monday and Thursday. They move Tuesday to Thursday. So we will be back with conversations with a Corgi on Tuesday morning this week. Everybody have a great week. And also, I just want to announce again that I'm doing a, a tea touch class for companion animals next Saturday. Uh, 9 to 12 that's going to affect the time I do this for sure um, and if you know anyone in my area that wants to learn T-Touch I'm in Western Mass it's about an hour to Hartford an hour to Worcester Mass um, an hour I don't know Middlebury Vermont area and maybe an hour and a half to Albany so if you know anybody in that circle who wants to learn a little bit about T-Touch send them on over um, and it's also on the websites and Facebook pages of a few dog training centers around here. So I'm really looking forward to that. It'll be fun. Everybody have a great day. I'm going to see the Winnie the Pooh movie. I like Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> Tristan can't go, but he likes Winnie the Pooh as well. Oh, you little corgi. We've been practicing our dog dancing. Oh yeah, it was a lot of work yesterday. It's too much overwhelming thought processes for my son. <laughs> and me, I, when I get confused, his confusion rises. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Everybody have a great day. We'll see you on Tuesday.